the spark of divinity within you. That means you are a creator. I talk a lot about being a creator, in particular being an inspired creator, and um, you know about my inspired creator community and all that. I, I just I know we are all creators, even if you don't think you're creating what you want and that you're not creating anything. We can't know anything about God, really, the divine creator, other than that this force, this force is creative. Almost every religion talks about God as the source of everything that we call creation, right? Human beings, animals, insects, the sky, the moon, the earth, the universe, the oceans, all of it, we're told were created by God, the divine creator, right? I don't believe um, that God has human attributes, that it's a he or a she or has a face or any of those things. But we're told that we're created in God's image. And I believe that that word image actually t is speaking mostly about, about being a creator, that God is a creative force and we have that spark within us. And so we we are created in that image of being a creator. And I think that I am and that you are, that we are all creators. If you don't believe you're a creator, then just look around you. Everything you have right now, you created, whether you like it or not. So I may not have created that mountain behind me, but I did create, <laughs> I'm trying to point to it, but I did create the chance to live in a house with a view of that mountain. I did create the opportunity to move to New Mexico. I did, um, I've created my marriage to a certain, you know, to a great extent. I have created my career. I create my finances. I create the health of my body, right? So we create all the time. Just look around. Everything that you see around you that is not like nature, <laughs> you've created, like it or not. Now you create in a lot of different ways and I can think of eight, I just kind of brainstormed eight ways for this video and um, there are probably more, but these eight ways I know we create, okay? And the first is, is through your focus or attention. So we're told that what we focus on expands, we are told that uh, you, we are where our attention is. These are spiritual and personal growth concepts that have been shared for years and years and years, all right? They probably go all the way back to biblical times for all I know. Anyway, so the more, so wherever you're focusing your, your attention and your mind, that is what you're creating, okay? What we focus on expands. We are where we put our attention. So that is what we're gonna experience. We're gonna create that experience via our focus, okay? <clears throat> so we're gonna create that experience and we're, because what we focus on expands, we're gonna create more of whatever we're focused on and putting our attention on. The second way that we create is through our thoughts, which, which uh, relates to focus, because when we're focused on something or we have our attention on something, we're actually thinking about it, right? And our thoughts are things, they have an energy and they impact the brain and the mind. And so the more we think about something, the more we create it. We attract it into our, our experience. It's like if you think blue, blue Prius, you're gonna see more blue Priuses, right? So it's just how it works. Um, but again, your thoughts are related to focus and attention, okay? So two very creative um, activities that are very, very associated. They, 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 they work together. Um, the third way you create is with your words, which relates to thoughts, because thoughts are made up of words, right? But words have an energy of their own. They have impact um, when we say them. Uh, the stories we tell ourselves impact um, how we show up in the world, how we think about ourselves, what we end up doing and, and having and all of that. So. So, you know, we're told Florence Scovel Shin talks about your word is your wand. I wrote about this recently and did a video related to this, um, I think last week. So 
Be careful with your words because they are creative. The fourth way that you create is with your commitments. So just look around. What you see is what you're committed to. You have created what you're committed to. So if you are committed to eating ice cream every night, that's what you'll do. And what you'll create is an unhealthy body or being overweight, right? If you're committed to watching Netflix, then that's what you're gonna have in your, in your life is a lot of watching Netflix. But if you're focused instead on your personal growth, you might be creating transformation or change. You might be meeting people who are growth oriented. You might be taking courses and learning, right? So you're, and, and as you do that, you're impacting what you're creating in your life. So um, whatever you're committed to is what you're creating. If you're committed to a lousy relationship with your partner, then you're gonna have a lousy relationship with your partner. But if you commit to having a better relationship with your partner, that's what you'll create. Or you'll create getting out of the partnership, right? So your commitments. The fifth way you create is with your values. You create the things you value. If you value wealth, you're going to create more of it because you're gonna be focused on money and on saving or investing, right? You're gonna put your attention on wealth. If you value, value family or relationships, you're gonna put your attention there and your thoughts there. All of those things, you're gonna be committed to that. It all goes together. And therefore, you will create that value of family or relationships. The sixth way that you create is with your energy. The entire world is an energetic place. And your words are, have energy, your thoughts have energy, uh, your emotions have energy, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Um, we just, we live in this energetic world. And so if your energy is, whatever your energy is, you're creating in direct correlation to that vibration. And so if you are feeling angry or depressed or sad, right? You're gonna be creating at that level, which is gonna create a lot of stuff in your life that you don't want. If you're creating from a place of neutrality, it's already better. Go beyond that and create from joy or from gratitude, and now you're at some of the highest vibratory states. You can check this out, um, Abraham Hicks' vi uh, vi vibration scale, I think it's called, check it out. But from there, joy and gratitude, you're gonna be creating at a very different level, different things. You're gonna be creating more positive things in your life and you're gonna find it easier to create, right? So you have to be very concerned about your vibration, your energy level, so that you create what you want, not what you don't want. The seventh way we create is with our emotions. So as I said, emotions have an energy of their own um, and so they impact uh, your ability to create. So know that those emotions um, are also connected to your thoughts. <laughs> and so, again, we have a combo of energy that is creative in good ways and bad ways. If you're happy, it's going to create one way. And if you're angry, it's going to create another, or resentful, or whatever. And the final, the eighth way that we create is through action. Through action. Um, I, I talked to a Kabbalist one time who said action is where the action is because we live in a physical world and we can try to change our attention and our thoughts and all kinds of things but and our emotions, but in the end we have to take different action. And so if your, um, uh, whatever actions you're taking are creating an equal or opposite uh, reaction, isn't that how it says, uh, how the science goes? Anyway, when you act in the world, that has an energy, it has an impact, and things are created because of that, okay? So what you do, how you behave, how you contribute, all these things are gonna cause creations to happen around you. If you're mean to someone, there's going, you're gonna create something related to that. Someone's gonna be mean, mean, mean to you or you're gonna feel deserted because they decide not to be around you anymore, right? So it's still creating things. Okay, unfortunately, too often we miscreate simply by a lack of awareness or consciousness of these eight abilities, these eight ways that we create. Focus and attention, thoughts, words, commitments, uh, values, energy, emotions, and actions, right? 
our mind tends to go towards the negative. And so we get, find ourselves in fear and worry and overwhelm and we, that lowers our energy, right? And we focus on what we don't want, even when we don't realize it. Um, we continue conscious and unconscious habits of thought and behavior that are not serving us. Um, we might believe, you know, you might believe you're a victim of circumstance or um, you might remain committed to things that don't serve you. You stand in your own way by remaining in your comfort zone, even when you're uncomfortable. All these things cause miscreations, cause you to create unconsciously what you don't want. And that's why you have to step into being a creator consciously and deliberately. Deliberately create by managing these things I mentioned, your focus and attention, your thoughts, your words, your commitments, your values, your energy, your emotions, and your actions. When you're conscious and aware, you can use these abilities to create what you want rather than what you don't want. You become a creator. Now that's, I always come back to who you're being, your identity. You become a creator and you do what creators do to create what they desire. You consciously create, you use your creative ability deliberately, and that avoids the miscreation and helps you use creative power in amazing ways. You can experience your creative ability. In the Inspired Creator community, I often talk about combining your, well, everywhere, I talk about combining your passion with your purpose, or your purpose with your passion, because that's when you get inspired. And that's when you know what your next inspired action is. And when you take an inspired action, you get an inspired result. That result is your creation. Creations are results. Sometimes they're inspired, sometimes they're not inspired. But inspired results will get you farther maybe not farther, they will get you the creations you desire, okay? So, leave me a comment down below. <clears throat> Let me know what you think of this video, whether you believe you're a creator, whether you're miscreating or creating what you desire, whether you use these eight abilities to create or whether you don't, or whether you want to add more to them. Leave me a comment down below, let me know. I'm Nina Amir, the Inspiration to Creation Coach. I I uh, am a transformational coach and I love to help people get inspired results, to step into being creators and to create. Creation has been a passion of mine. I can't say I always manage to create what I want, but this is an area of real passion for me and I'm constantly looking for new ways to step into being a creator. But I know we are creators and I would be honored to help you. Uh, create more inspired results. If you're interested in that, click on the link above for the Inspired Creator Community, where I offer both personal and spiritual growth. Um, it's a transformational coaching program, uh, group program, and um, personal and spiritual growth. And I would be honored to serve you there and to help you to step into being a creator. Until I talk to you next time, go out there and achieve more inspired results. Mm -hmm.